Hi there, my name is Merlin, like the wizard. Today I want to talk about self-replicating turtles. And this is a video I'm very excited for, but also a little nervous because there's no guarantee it's going to work. There's a lot of things that could go wrong, so we're going we're gonna to have our fingers crossed. But anyway, we have two turtles here. And believe it or not, this used to be one turtle until just a moment ago. So over here we have, this is Lon. And a few moments ago, Lon gave birth to Mwop. Uh, this here is Mwop. So uh, by gave birth, what I mean is Lon went out, gathered the necessary materials, and then actually created another turtle in her own image, a, an exact duplicate. And so now these two turtles are continuing to go off into the world and they're going to make new turtles of their own. So uh, turtle generations are going to follow. And those turtles are going to make turtles, and those turtles are going to make turtles, etc. It's going to grow exponentially. That's the idea here. But instead of staying and watching these two turtles, I'm actually going to head up to the surface, and we're going we're gonna to set a turtle going of our own. So let's switch into game mode creative, and then set up this process for ourselves. I'm going to put this down in a random spot. Brand new turtle. You can see it's got a pickaxe and a crafting table. And that makes it a mining crafty turtle. I'm going to power it on and run paste bin get special code. And this one's going to be called turtlogenesis. So you can do this at home. Then I'm going to run turtlogenesis like that. We get a welcome message. And at the same time, we also get a randomly generated name. So this is Dwightesra. Dwightesra. Ooh, it's a beautiful name. Um, <laughs> we're going to press enter here. And then it wants coal. So we're going to insert eight things of coal. That's going to bring it up to fuel level 640. That means 640 blocks it can travel before needing to be refueled. Then it also wants a chest and a sugar cane. Now you might be thinking it's cheating, right? I'm giving it items to start off. But all I care about is that the new turtle is an exact duplicate. So whatever I give it now, it's going to have to duplicate later and give to that turtle, including the coal and the chest and the sugar cane. All right, last thing. Initiate global turtle colonization. Hmm. I don't know what that means. I'm just going to say yes. I think it'll probably be fine. We get a nice little countdown here. Three, two, one. There we go. We're off. Uh, I should have started a little timer going in the edit so that we can see how long this takes. Um, I'm also going to switch into spectator mode, and I'm also going to engage another thing. This is going to be... Uh, T follow, which is a data pack I wrote, and it's going to allow us to follow along with the turtle like this. So I'm hands off keyboard right now, but we're still following alongside the turtle, which is going to make our time lapses look quite nice. First step here is to touch bedrock so the turtle knows what height it's at. Then you can also see the turtle any second now. There we go. It's going to poop up all these items. That's just it clearing out its inventory space. Here it is passing some diamond, which is just a painful reminder that the turtle can only see up, down, and straight ahead. Cannot see left and right. OK, you can see the turtle getting some redstone here. It's only going to get one block because it knows it doesn't need that much. Now it looks like we got some iron. Always nice. All right, now we're going up, but we haven't found diamonds yet. So what's going on? The turtle has a constant in its program called min travel fuel. And whenever it drops below that value in terms of fuel, it knows that it's in danger of running out of fuel. So what the turtle's doing now is going up to coal height to look for coal so that it can refuel before it dies. And this is the part where things could go wrong because it probably has enough fuel to find coal, but if it doesn't, uh, if it gets unlucky and there's no coal to be found, the turtle's just straight up going to stop moving and die. Uh, you could consider this a flaw in the program. What I consider it to be is nature, right? Sometimes animals don't live long enough to procreate. They run out of fuel and starve, or food and starve, which in this case will be our turtle's fuel. Um, but as long as the turtle survives more than 50% of the time, it should be a viable species. I got some more iron. OK, got some coal. The turtle will not be dying just yet. Uh, this here, this turtle mining out the coal here, is actually the crux of the program. 
because in the past, when people have made programs like this, trying to make turtles that make turtles, it's always been a matter of how do you get fuel? How do you fuel the turtle while it's gathering all of those resources? And usually what people go for is tree farms, right? Because you can fuel a turtle with anything that a furnace can burn. And what people usually do is uh, logs because they are a renewable resource, right? You plant a sapling, grow a tree, get some logs, plant another sapling. The problem with that, and the reason I didn't go with it, is it takes a while, it, it requires a lot of maintenance in terms of the turtle digging up trees, and it's not portable. So the turtle would always have to return to the same spot. The reason that people haven't in the past gone the coal route is because if you have a simple mining algorithm that just digs a quarry, you can't find coal fast enough for it to be an efficient, reasonable method of gathering fuel. But if you see my previous video, I have a method of gathering resources that is efficient enough at gathering fuel to keep the turtle fueled on its long voyage. And that's because it digs in a straight line until it finds some ore, then it mines that entire vein using algorithms, and then it continues on its way. And that is efficient enough. That is absolutely efficient enough to keep the turtle going. And that's why uh, this is a unique uh, <laughs> original attempt at this particular type of challenge. Diamond! We have found diamond. All right. So this should be our last resource. It looks like there's enough of it. All right, just gathering some coal real quick before heading to the surface. We have emerged. Now the turtle's first goal is going to be finding trees, which it looks like it has successfully done already. It's actually a very lucky turtle right there. So it knows that leaves mean that nearby there will be logs. So we're just gonna let it do some digging out in this area. All right, all done with that task. Now what we're trying to find is sand. Now the turtle has some very special instructions when it comes to water. If it hasn't found sand yet, it always goes underwater and will trace along the riverbed because it thinks that's the best place to find sand. Often you'll find sand at the bottom of water. If it's already found sand and it's still looking for trees, then it's supposed to go across the top of the water because no point in going underwater when that kind of wastes time. Uh, obviously in this case, we hadn't found sand yet, so it went underwater and was rewarded. Now comes the fun part. So it dumped all of its items into that chest, placed a sugar cane, and is now gathering uh, furnaces. It just crafted some furnaces, and it's now going to place three furnaces and then fill them with things that need to be smelted. So we're gonna get some sand, some cobblestone, and some iron in those. All right, there we go. Now it is a waiting game. So why does it need to place sugarcane? It is not enough for the turtle just to copy its body, it also has to copy its mind. And in order to do that, it needs to transfer its program to the new turtle. The problem is you can't just transfer data turtle to turtle if they're adjacent. The only way to do it is through a disk, <laughs> a floppy disk. And the only way to make a floppy disk is with paper, which requires sugarcane. So that one sugarcane is just to make uh, paper to make a floppy disk. Now it needs to make a total of four extra sugarcane, one to keep for itself, three to make paper, and then the one that is planted currently to give to the new turtle. So it's gonna be five total, four new ones. While we're watching sugarcane grow, if you've made it this far into the video, you might be interested to know that I've started doing online tutoring in computer craft. So if you like this stuff and you're interested in learning how to do it on your own, you should go to merlintutoring.com and hit me up and I'd be happy to talk about what you wanna learn. Uh, that's my shameless self-promotion for the video. You can go back to watching Sugar Cane Grow. One. Two. 
three, four sugar cane. All right, now the action really starts. So first, Turtle's gonna mine up these furnaces, gathering all their items. Then comes my favorite part. So this is when it does all the crafting. You can see all the items are in the chest. That's because it can't craft while other items are in its inventory. So it needs to clear out its inventory somehow. Then also, it doesn't have a way of choosing a specific item out of a chest. So the only way to take what it wants is to take everything and then put back everything that it didn't want. <laughs> so that's why you can see every few seconds it's going and emptying out the entire chest like it is right now. Then it puts back all the items it didn't need, and then it fills in the crafting area. So here it's making a computer. That's going to be necessary for making a turtle. That should be what it does next. There's our turtle. I find this part very relaxing. Diamond pickaxe. Got our crafting table. Those are all the items we need to make our final turtle. Here we go. There is our mining crafty turtle. But we're not done. Gonna make a disk drive. Then we're gonna get some sugar cane, make some paper. And last but not least, gonna make our definitely not antiquated technology, our floppy disk. All right, now it's gonna grab the items it needs. And don't blink, because this is gonna happen quite quickly. Here we go. Gets the items, gonna place the disk drive, insert the disk, place the turtle power on, and... Turtlogenesis. Let's see. What is his name? Rybedwa. Rybedwa. Beautiful. <laughs> you can see it took, it took the chest back. Uh, I'm gonna switch back into, oh boy, game mode spectator. There we go. This was a super fun project. I think it's about 6,000 lines of code. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of complicated stuff to it. All the crafting and item management and all that, I tried to make as uh, modular as possible. So it works with crafting anything you want. You can insert things into the crafting tree as long as you... Uh, program in what their recipes are. Uh, and yeah, so all this was really, I think, a precursor to a bunch of other programs I want to write, all of which center around this theme of turtles having way more way more being uh, autonomous, right? Uh, and, and, and really preparing them for their world domination that I think we all knew was coming. So stay tuned for videos like that, and thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go to bed now.